Murray. John, was, was your family member, were they all supportive as you sort of revealed all their secrets in the book? <laughs> or were, were they a little kind of put off by... I had to prolong that. <laughs> um, all of the immediate families have family members have been extremely supportive. Um, there have been some extended family members who have not been that supportive because uh, they they come from a small town in the Midwest where a lot of the people who gave them a lot of aggravation in the 1930s uh, about prohibition um, have retained the resentments um, to this day, 80 years later. Um, and uh, my family in that little town of Mason City, Iowa, lived in an immigrant enclave during Prohibition, where pretty much you know, bootlegging was a way of life. Um, they, uh, they didn't like the fact that my uh, grandfather and grandmother were able to purchase their own home. And uh, apparently they were blamed for being bootleggers, and that's the only reason why they were able to purchase the home. Um, what actually happened is that my aunt suffered two years with tonsillitis, and so my grandfather decided to sell his wine to pay for a tonsillectomy. And then he was caught and paid a fine, and it pretty much financially was a wash. So whatever money he paid for the tonsillectomy, he lost in paying the fine. But nonetheless, since my grandfather and grandmother were able to purchase the home, the news spread around town that the way they were able to purchase the home was because they were in cahoots with Al Capone. Uh, and so to this day, there is this residual sensitivity to that issue, which is which, which I can sympathize with to a point. You know, I mean, here in Pacific Palisades in Santa Monica, we look upon stories like that and think, oh, how charming, <laughs> right? Um, but uh, in a small town like that, memories take a long time to die hard. So that's all in the book. I'm not, I'm not saying anything that's not in the book. I actually mine that as a good example of a culture war. You look at the, the map of the wet states and the dry states in the 1920s, and they are quite comparable to the blue states and the red states <laughs> of 2000. And, you know, the underlying current of prohibition, which was an anti-alcohol law, was an anti-Catholic politics. You, you had the, the nativist, fundamentalist, evangelical Protestant community in the hinterland, in the dry states, versus the largely urban Catholic lower class communities of alcohol drinkers <laughs> in, the, in the wet states, the immigrants in the wet states. And my grandfather, who was an Italian immigrant living in rural Iowa, found himself caught in the middle of a culture war as an immigrant Italian Catholic who was held in suspicion on all three counts. <laughs> oh. How many trips to Italy have you made to explore your background and history? I've made about three trips there, um, and other, other family members have gone uh, to different parts. I've never been to the small town of Ferindola, mm -hmm. but my father has, interestingly, the Polish one of the family, <laughs> and, and my sister Jeannie has, and so uh, I relied on them and other pictures that other people have taken to help fill out the storyline and set the scene. <laughs>